Hey guys, how's it going? My name's Steven, I live in Spokane, Washington, and as of right now, it is currently 1 a.m. on April 29th, 2021, and I just read about the passing of Hippiki Ryu. I apologize if I pronounce his name wrong, but um, I'm heartbroken. Um, I feel like, you know, you guys and everybody else who's listening to this podcast probably feels the same way. I'm saddened, I'm frustrated, and I feel like this is something that should not have happened. Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown. The unofficial sumo podcast for official sumo fans. Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown. This is Ryan. This is Jake. This is Flarek. And this is Mac. And we are following up on our previous bonus episode on injuries in sumo, something we really hoped we wouldn't have to uh, wouldn't have to do this so soon. Um, but, uh, there has been some obvious big news that, uh, precipitated a quick follow-up from us. Um, Hibikiryu, the, uh, the guy that we were covering primarily in our previous episode has passed away as, uh, due to complications from his in-ring injury. Uh, so we just wanted to follow up on this, talk about, uh, how does this change the discussion? Uh, there have been some developments we want to talk about. Uh, there is going to be a little bit of first aid improvement uh, from the Sumo Association, but so very minor. Y- yeah, it, like the 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 barest minimum to say that we have done something. Uh, but um, yeah, we'll 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 get there. But uh, first off, let's talk about Hebe Kiryu real quick. Um, we obviously we are not doctors where we need to make sure that we say that at the beginning, every time we talk about medical stuff here, but um, I, I do want to make it clear right off the top here that we are not, we cannot say with any certainty that the terrible response to his injury in the ring did or did not affect his outcome. Um, that's something we'll probably never know the extent of, but uh, you know, it's, it, it's just something that we wanted to make clear that, um, with our knowledge of, of, of medicine, we cannot, we are certainly not someone you should come to for medical advice or judgments nope. on medical situations, but that doesn't mean that their response was okay. You know, the, if, if it's true, if it, if, if it could be determined that he would have passed away regardless of, of that terrible response, that doesn't make the response. Okay. No, no, that that's like basically the thesis statement here that I wanted to, to make clear at the beginning terrible terrible response no less pathetic and embarrassing than we have talked about it in the past but you know we can't say for certain what impact it had on the outcome Mm -hmm. um but yeah so there's a lot of news out there there's a lot of uh uh tributes there's a lot of discussion on uh sumo forums on reddit um just what how does this change the conversation compared to before when he was paralyzed but alive you know and i think in short it means that it's it, it can't be the can cannot be kicked down the road uh any any further than it already was being kicked in my opinion um this is this is somebody that lost his life directly as a result of sumo and there's to to some level you know we can't say like you have to completely change the sport but when somebody dies, you know, that certainly ups the stakes. That means, you know, somebody is, is no longer here that, you know, is no longer here because of this sport. And that's, that just doesn't fly in, in the 21st century. That's, that's just ridiculous to me. What, what do you guys think? Anybody, um, what are your guys' immediate responses to the, to, to how this changes the whole situation? I don't I see know. A lot of, I see a lot of sad faces and sighs. It, 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 yeah. Yeah. it really is. It's like, man, like, what, how do you, what can you do? What can you say at this point? I mean, yeah, it, the, the difference between somebody that could be permanently paralyzed uh, for the rest of their life and, and actually dying, I think that's a, a very, a very huge step. And obviously, th- this is a guy that was put into 
the care of his Oyakata and the Sumo Association, basically. The, these guys are basically raised by these people. And I'm trying to look up when he joined Sumo. It looks like 2011. He was born 1993. So he joined when he was 18 years old uh, and was basically put into the care. He never made it to the salary rank. So he is still always viewed as a child in their eyes. And for somebody that is under your care and protection to have died, that means that to me that you you need to be looking very far inward to see how you could let somebody that is for all intents and purposes and not really but kind of your child you take care of them and he's your charge yeah it, it, this is a failure on your part that he he passed away like this obviously yes it's a freak accident and maybe it didn't change because of the poor response and i think they they know that it was a poor response based on some uh reactions that i i've heard uh i think in some videos that we'll reference later but it sounds like they know it was a poor reaction um but yeah i i think it it, it just completely changes everything when somebody has has died and you're their caretaker uh, responsibility needs to be taken there and i think changes need to be made to make sure that it doesn't happen again because you're telling these parents like we're going to take good care of your child uh, we're going to try to do everything we can to make sure they live uh, a great life and can do everything that they can and you're now you're lying to those parents because somebody's died and you could have done something to prevent it uh but you didn't and now you have to change Mm-hmm. One thing that uh, that came up in in discussions and videos that I've seen is um, training people to land on their head so they don't put their hand down first. Yeah, I think that's something. Um, I think Chris Sumo noted in his video uh, on the topic here that 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 at least one Oyakata is like, I think I don't want to train that anymore. Yeah, um, and that's that's like you know that there there was all this talk about like, oh, it's a freak accident. You couldn't pre- you you couldn't prevent it. So like we have to discuss what happens after, not what leads to it, mm-hmm. because there's so many things about how this injury could have been prevented that would just uproot how sumo works, you know, like things about making it a softer landing or changing the rules such that like, you, you know, one, one, maybe there's one thing about like changing the rules such that the dead body rule applies differently um, you know, maybe, maybe expand what that can entail. You know, if you're going to put your hand down to protect your head, you know, maybe, maybe they look at that differently than they do yeah. now or something. That's I what I know. was thinking. I think that but, would be a good rule that should be looked at again. It's like, okay, are you, are you really in the dead body form or are you just trying to protect yourself? I mean, no different yeah. than when Ichi Nojo, we, we see him giving up. That's so that he can prevent himself from falling out of the ring. Well, now if we look at the same kind of deal here, where it's like, all right, are you bracing yourself? Are you are you still in the power position? I think that can get revamped to hopefully help, you know, for future incidents like this. Or, or at least just change the discussions, change the priorities, change the thought process of a Rikshi who's about to land on his head. Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> when when you mentioned like uh, how this uh, this the switch uh, him passing away has kind of changed my thoughts on it. My original thoughts on like some reform would be. A, get some kind of medical person on next to the dohyo at all times. That's kind of a no-brainer. And then, but and then the other is maybe make the dohyo a little bit wider. But this uh this injury kind of pretty much didn't really involve a uh, raised dohyo at all. It looked like it was just kind of like an uh, injury right next to the edge with a tawara. And so like kind of looking towards other ways to change the sport to decrease that. Like why do we have like huge tawara there? Or maybe the way we fall, it's I don't necessarily have an answer for that, but I think like the changes where I was thinking beforehand, I don't think they're re- they are personally enough. Maybe we should look into doing some more stuff to kind of change some stuff. Really, really escalates it from like a hey, this this is a big deal. We should talk about this too. Somebody's dead now, and we need to like escalate this, and it needs to stop being like, yeah. It, the the action that we've seen from the Sumo Association so far is. Oh, incredibly predictable you know it, it, a lot of hemming and hawing and at the very least there's been um um there, there's there's been announcements that we're going to start doing some first aid classes of some sort 
I don't know exactly who that entails. Like, is that every single person? Does anybody I, know on that? Yeah, one? I, I, I saw a few more details from at sumo follower on Twitter. Um, so it is going to be the Shimpan department, the guard duty Oyakata, the guys that are in the blue, the jackets, blue, blue jackets and related employees. So Yobidashi. Could, <laughs> yeah, that could be a very wide net of who that captures. Yeah. Gotcha. I, but but not the I, active wrestlers. Sorry. Yeah, and I don't think it needs to be the active wrestlers. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I, it should be the active wrestlers. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Blair. I yeah, I think uh, that's that's good. Like, it's a good first step. Like, I think we'll all agree that more training is good. But like, also the the depth of the training, like, I think is might not be great. Once again, getting someone on ringside who has like even more in depth training, like a medical professional, would be ideal. But, you know, having some people who know, like, oh, this is – that looked like a possible neck injury. Let's not move them while the person is going to be walking up next. Yeah, so the tweet that Sumo Follower sent out described it as a short course in dojo-related injuries and how to deal with them quickly. Um, I don't like that it's a short course. Yeah, th that that gives me pause. Basically, you're train you could be training the four of us, have like a, a one-day seminar on, okay, this is what you do in a concussion situation. This is what you do if somebody's not moving. This is what you do if somebody hurt their leg. This is what you do in all of these other situations. A one-day course when the situation might not arise for a few months is basically useless unless you are putting – into effect some other policies where you're reinforcing that training over and over again to make sure that you're uh that you know what you're doing that everybody knows what they're doing and that uh maybe you run rehearsals uh, if something happens you do some drills and figure out okay how do we get these guys out here yeah mm -hmm. I, I, I would say i think uh like short course is probably pretty standard for people who like where it's not actually their uh, area of expertise like uh like first context, training yeah, to get to give some context, uh, I I am a coach for Ultimate Frisbee, and in order to get that the coach to be certified to coach, I actually have to take like an hour and a half like safe sport, which covers like concussions, uh, what to do about bullying, like bullying hazing, which is probably not something sumo. Well, they do care about, I would say, yeah. but I, yeah. I I guess they do get trained about. It. But the the point being is like you do it's a short course on kind of know, know what to recognize and when to take the next step of to escalate it to a medical professional. And it's so I think that is is a good good base, you know. And like I, they have refresher uh, courses like every every year or so I have to take, and hopefully they do something similar in sumo. But they have to have the next point of escalation and have it be timely. Is my, yeah, my yeah, because like we we don't we're not uh, calling for every person in the association to be like fully EMT certified or anything like that. Right. But we desperately need people. I, I, Ryan, you mentioned like doing drills. Like I, to me, to me, what really needs to be at the top of the list is put somebody in charge, have somebody there to like take control of the situation and have enough knowledge to at least stabilize wrestlers until the professionals can get there. Mm -hmm. We've had so many stupid, just pathetic excuses for why they don't want ringside doctors there at all times. But assuming that that is for whatever stupid reason off the table, like having somebody that can at the very least make it clear that, you know, we are handling this, we care about the wrestler and we're going to make sure everything is okay for a couple minutes until the doctor can get here. You know, like that, that's all like absolute bare minimum type stuff. And I yeah. hope that that's part of that training is, is putting somebody in charge so that they can handle the situation for the short term. Yeah, so a quote from Shibatayama Oyakata said, uh, we had cases of concussion, neck injury, people going wobbly after a single harite. We need to know what to do in each of those many cases. In the case of Hibikiryu's neck injury, we need to know whether moving the rikshi is okay or not, and that is what this workshop is about, which is good that they're doing it now, but it's so very concerning But that, that they didn't know if it was okay right. to move somebody that was paralyzed or not. Dude, like, like who what thinks else that? Don't they like, know right now, <laughs> seriously, dude. That's like step number two in in like any first aid training is like first find out how to get somebody who knows what they're doing here ASAP, and second, don't friggin' move somebody who who's got a neck injury. Like that's that's like the number one thing that I've had drilled into my head with any training that I've ever had. Mm -hmm. Leave I, them be. <laughs> keep keep them there. Keep them conscious, but do not move them. And also slight concern that 
apparently from the neck down, just suck it up, get over it. Uh, they don't seem to care about any lower body injuries no. or how to properly care for those to not further aggravate the injury in either stepping up the dohyo to do your bow or getting off the dohyo or getting to the uh, giant wheelchair uh, properly. Uh, so yeah. would would yeah. like to see that scope expanded a little bit, but it's a these start, but these Rixi are gladiators. They they want to have they want to be able to go up and bow. <laughs> yeah. And and I think that's just uh, a difference in mindset between uh, their culture and our culture and how they kind of view these things. And mm -hmm. once again, it, it is a religious thing and we don't know about that religion. Uh, and so uh, it's hard for us to say how that takes into account how these people are treated. I, I agree that that excuse only goes so far, though, when it gets to the point where like it's super obvious exactly what should have been done in a situation like this. Uh, I, but yeah, in, in, in essence, I, I know what you mean. I agree with you there. Um, I, for, for me, like the thing that here's a quote that, um, really makes me angry. This is per, per Chris Sumo's video. We haven't necessarily found other sources on it, but, uh, a coach said, of course, lives are worth saving, but this kind of case happens once in several decades, if at all. And these doctors might be sitting here for an entire year and have nothing to do. So why don't we focus on getting our existing doctors here faster? I don't know about Bull, you guys. I say <laughs> Bull. <laughs> that makes me so mad because yeah. first off, have them sitting there for an entire year and nothing to do. Tough. <laughs> well, one, I don't, that's not even the case. How many different injuries yeah, have we showcased yeah. over the past year that just having a doctor there could help out? It's not like you only need the doctor there in case somebody is about to die. Yeah. Doctor, <laughs> doctors do exactly. a lot more than just save people that are in imminent life-threatening danger you can mm -hmm. like we said anything below the neck doctors still do that stuff yes yeah <laughs> every doctor i've met personally so i i mean this is only anecdotal evidence most of them work on people who are alive <laughs> and, and like you know <laughs> and plans and, and seem to be like they will be alive for years to come exactly that's kind of the point of doctory yes. um so but regardless like it doesn't have to be this situation for the doctor to be useful and when he says, why don't we focus on getting our existing doctors here faster? Like, I don't know, put him at <laughs> ringside. Maybe that would be a good solution to getting a doctor hmm. to ringside faster. I don't know. That, that quote just made me so mad. Uh, yeah. and, and even in the absolute most generous hypothetical for, for the coach who said this, if they sit there for an entire year and have nothing to do, yay. Good. Okay. Good. Awesome. <laughs> I don't yeah. want them to have anything to do, but inevitably they will. Mm-hmm. That's one of the more uh, striking things I think for us uh, from, come from like the West looking at over at, at Japan is because every level of sport has like someone on ring, like close by to be able to respond to these things, even at the youth level. Like I have memories of like at football, there's like an ambulance like parked next to oh, yeah. uh, the, the football field. It's uh, they like it's something culturally we, very, we have accepted that we need to have someone nearby. And like doctors, you know, they get paid anyways to be there or if they probably want to be there to be able to help stuff as well. So you, I, you don't, I don't necessarily become a that. doctor if you don't if you don't want to help people who are hurt and need your help. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yes, I, <laughs> the, the, the argument that it's like too expensive to have a doctor there is also silly because like <laughs> yeah. bunk, I say bunk. <laughs> yeah, they're uh, they're. Sumo makes money. You can you can afford to pay for a couple doctors, trainers. And if you can't afford to have somebody there to keep your wrestlers healthy and alive, then your business model is wrong. You know, right? Like that's then you don't. It, it's like it's like the minimum wage debate. You know, like if if you can't pay minimum wage, then that's not a problem with the minimum wage. That's a problem with how the money that you are making. <laughs> that is, yeah. So like it's it's an issue where like if you can't afford to run the bare minimum, which they are running below the bare minimum, in our opinion, as we are saying right now, then that, that business model doesn't work. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's a problem with, with, uh, you know, the money you're taking in, not a problem with the doctor, you know? So I don't know. I, I think mm -hmm. that, ex that excuse is very hollow to me too, but I, I we're, I, I know that we're all just kind of preaching to the choir here, um, on, <laughs> We, we are we are all on the same page that maybe we should try to keep our wrestlers alive and healthy um so yeah, you know just a little bit it's just yeah. a little so why don't we talk about like what uh wh why don't we focus on what we do from here what is happening from here uh we talked a little bit about the first aid classes but ryan it looks like you added some notes on the specifics 
Uh, yeah, and I think I already went over <laughs> everything uh, <laughs> that I knew about those. Um, uh, one, one thing the, that the I other, think the we... other thing that I think is interesting is that the uh, the classes were not occurring because of the Hibikidu incident. Uh, they are actually planned beforehand due to the Shonan no Umi concussion inc- incident that happened a few months ago. Ah. Uh, so I did so find that's, that. That's good. Yeah, so the, it's been a plan for a while. Uh, hopefully the Hibikidu incident just gives them more things to talk about, more urgency, and more reason to pay attention and get it right. One thing that uh, I, I want to shout out Chris Sumo's video one more time because I thought this was... And uh, this video by Chris Sumo, sorry to interrupt. We did uh, tweet it out earlier this morning so that if anybody's interested in what we're referring to, uh, there you can go and watch it. It's about 12 minutes long. He goes into a lot about what he believes, the like societal reasons that kind of led to this. We don't want to comment on that. We're not there. We don't know. Um but it is a very interesting listen. Uh, insightful. One, w- Definitely one man's insightful. opinion on some things that led to it. Right, for sure. Um, one of the things, the, the, the specific detail I was going to bring up here, though, was um, when, when they announced that they were going to be doing first aid classes, they announced that after Hibikiryu's, uh, after his match where he was paralyzed. But I can't remember if this was before or after he passed away. Uh, but I think I saw it. I'll, I'll do know. some digging real quick. Yeah, but it, it was it was roughly the same time. Uh, but but the the point that Chris Sumo brought up was they could have just said we're doing classes and then shut up and uh-huh. just like let that be the news. But instead, they're like, oh no no no, this is not Hibikiryu. This is because of Shona Naomi. You know, we were we were already going to do this, which just you makes it that much it. that much more tone deaf. Of like, you know, maybe if you're going to mention that, also mention that Hibikiryu is you know another factor in this. But yeah, according to the, 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 the thesis statement that Chris Sumo puts out there, like the societal reasons that it can't be the system, it must be due to individuals. Like that, that idea kind of, kind of uh, colors the, my opinion of, of what they said, um, you know, re- regarding Shona Naomi, it's, it's nothing to do with Hibikiryu. No, uh, couldn't have, it, yeah. that was just bad luck, you know, like th- things like that, just, I don't know. But Regardless, I would recommend that video. I thought it was insightful, um, but uh, yeah, it's it's there's a lot on there that we don't know enough to say for certain we endorse or not. But you know, it, I, I thought it was a, a really fun one to watch. Yeah, uh, and just for clarification, at least in my Twitter news feed, the news about the uh, the doyo related injuries uh, course that they're doing came out the day after uh, the announcement of Hibikiyu's death. Okay. It could have been that that forced their hand to make sure that they made the announcement. I don't know. That possibly. Possibly. Also, very possibly not, because we, we know that optics are not particularly important to uh, <laughs> Sumo Association announcements. Um, yeah, so let's, uh, the, the other thing that's going on right now that uh, we, would, we would recommend you take a look at is uh, we've got a GoFundMe put together by... Um, uh, the campaign for NSK injury protocol account on Twitter. Uh, just search for that. We've also retweeted it. You can find it on our on our feed. Um, but there's uh, a, an effort to raise some money for Hibikiryu's family. Um, it's GoFundMe, so you know it's traceable, auditable, auditable. Yeah, I said that right. Yep. Got um, it. So you know the money's going where you where we're saying it's going. Um, but it is. It, it it's intended for Hibikiryu's family. Um, I did not know this until I read the details on the GoFundMe, but Hibikiryu was 28 years old and an only child. Uh, so that, yeah, it makes it just that much more devastating uh, to hear. Uh, but but regardless, the the they set a goal of of a thousand pounds to to raise for his family. Already surpassed that, but that doesn't mean that uh, if if it's something that is as important to you as it is to us, uh, you know throw a throw a few yen their way and and help out a little bit doesn't uh you know obviously it's not solving all of the systemic issues we're talking about but it's if if it's something that would help um help that that family and also help as a international sumo fan it's it's one of the few things that we have the ability to do right now so go check that out if you are interested at all um, they also, oh, the uh, campaign for NSK injury protocol. Uh, I would recommend following that account as well, uh, Twitter and on Facebook. 
Um, they're, they've been posting news and updates. And uh, I believe we mentioned it in our previous, uh, the previous installment of this series, which I wish that it wasn't a series. I wish that was a one-off Shit. episode. But I believe we mentioned back then that they had also sent uh, an open letter uh, regarding, um, uh, regarding injury pre- uh, protocol with input from an actual doctor, as opposed to like, you know, four Midwestern podcast hosts who are not doctors. <laughs> but um, yeah, any, anybody else have uh, have something they want to add to the GoFundMe, to the action we got going forward? I don't have anything related to those. Um, I think main thing I, I want to add is I don't want it to get lost that like he became you like a life was lost and it was he became you meets key. His name, his birth name was Amano meets key. I mean, he joined Sumo when he's 18 years old. I wish we had more information to give to people about this guy, what he was like, what his personality was. Unfortunately, position we are in, the position he was in, I mean, he wasn't making news and people weren't following him to get to know him. Um, but I, I, I don't want it to be kind of lost that we're, we're, ta- we're talking around the circumstances of what happened to him uh, and not really talking about him. I just want it to be known like, we wish we could say more about him, but unfortunately we don't know anything too much about he be key to you. The person um, did see that apparently his voice was featured on the sumo documentary, uh, sumo do uh, all in Japanese. Uh, I don't think there's any English subtitles for it, but you can hear from him a little bit in that movie. Uh, he was a member of the Sakagawa Bea, uh, made it to a career high of Sundan May 24. Unfortunately, that's all that we know about him. I wish I wish we could share more about Hebe Kiyoti, the person, but unfortunately, that's just not anything we have uh, information about. And finding information about a 28-year-old lost in the middle of Sumo's lower divisions, not a lot of info you could find as an American. Yeah, and I mean, that's part of the, part of the point of Sumo. Part of their, like, priorities is you know, you have hundreds of wrestlers here and we're all fairly uniform, you know, until you get to the secutory ranks, you're not really there. There's no, there's no real individuality to it. Mm -hmm. So like, it's just, just picking it, picking a lower division wrestler out of a hat. It's very difficult to find anything to that, you know, about them. Um, So yeah, it's, I, I I agree completely. Like I, I wish we had more that we could say about him. Um, the Sakagawa Bea that he was a part of is also Miyogiryu and uh, Sadano Umi's uh, Bea, so, mm. Heya. So hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully those two guys are access to more information about Hibikiryu personally. Um, I don't think I've seen any statements or or anything from the two, but uh, you know, it's also doesn't not, mean they're not out there. Doesn't the mean they're side. not out there. You know. It, you know, we're, we're dealing with the, the barrier. We always are where, you know, English language, we have so much less. Uh, and also the fact that, uh, those guys don't have social media accounts. Thanks again, Abby. Um, <laughs> you, but, <jerk. laughs> you know, uh, we did see, uh, Reardon did speak up a little bit about, um, about his stable mate who passed away from COVID, right? Uh, mm. I think there were a couple things that we got out of the Uden. I can't remember off the top of my head. But yeah. yeah, you're refer- referring to Shibushi, who died last year from uh, right. COVID-19 complications. Right. Yeah, and that one, um, that one we didn't cover as much because that's uh, you know, the global pandemic hits hits everywhere. That's that's not necessarily something we can place the blame on the JSA or anybody in particular. But mm-hmm. not that we are looking. To no, pin- no, oh, no, 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 no. Agreed. No. Agreed. <laughs> I'm just but saying, like that's why yeah. that's why that one was a very different context than Hebe Gear You, and yeah. also we we definitely should give credit where it's due. The JSA does not screw around with COVID. No. Yeah, <laughs> and I. You know that you can't say for sure how that would have played out with or without Shobushi's passing away, but uh, since then, for sure, they have definitely, in my opinion, done a, a good job of managing what they can for that. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, it is it is messed up that we've got two uh, two different active wrestlers who passed away in, in about a year apart, and. Uh, Honestly, I'm thinking back. That's certainly they're certainly the only two who have passed away since we've been watching sumo wrestling. Uh, mm. Active wrestlers, I mean. Mm. Um, man, was the was the most recent one before that? Maybe the hazing incident in like the 2000s. 
I don't know. It's certainly very uncommon. Wow. Yeah. It's certainly very uncommon, and it should be more common than it has any right to be, though. I mean, the, yeah, the yeah, Sh- yeah. The Shibushi one is. I don't think you can. Yeah, that that's that uh, that I one I wouldn't count. Yeah. But. Yeah, yeah, but like re- regardless, it's uh, people in their their twenties should not be passing away very often, and uh, having two of them in in one year is is just kind of scary. Yeah, so I, yes. I, I think you could comp it to. Like NFL, probably the most violent sport in America. I, I can't tell you a person who has died due to their involvement in the NFL. Uh, there, I mean, there are a lot of times with like basketball and uh, uh, and some lo- lower level football where just like a heart attack or something will claim somebody. So, I mean, maybe it's not the best comparison because stuff happens and they died, but it wasn't a direct result of the sport itself. Um, but MMA, I'm thinking the same thing. I can't think of anybody who has a direct result of anything that occurred in the ring, uh, has passed away. Yeah. Yeah. And Mm. I mean, I'm sure it, it's happened. There's so many like under-regulated promotions out there, but yeah, but like, uh, in in MMA, there have been a couple, uh, a couple high profile incidents of people cutting weight, which is that's, that's MMA's version of, of the no ringside doctor's pretend this issue doesn't exist kind of thing that's another time but um but yeah like regardless though uh we we're gonna stand by from now till the day that we die that you gotta have a doctor right there you know that's (laughs) that's no brainer step this is basic this is basic i appreciate that we're getting a class going uh and hopefully the next time because there will be a next time the next time there is an an injury whether it's a concussion or uh, you know, a blown leg or something like that, uh, that we've seen enough times. I, I really think the eyes of the entire sumo fan base are going to be very, very closely watching what, what happens. Did this first aid class change anything? Does anybody step up as I'm in charge of the situation? Here's how we're going to help this guy's health. Does, is anything different? We really, I, I'm hopeful, but, uh, you know, I, I you also got to take into account everything we've seen from the Sumo Association in the past. And I can't say I'm super optimistic, but I don't know, man. You, you know, there's going to be a next time. It almost certainly will be less severe than Hibikiryu, but there will be a next time that somebody gets hurt in the ring. And mm-hmm. I'm really hoping that that's going to get better. The response, I mean. Yeah. Y- yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Also, their injury. I hope their injury gets better. Whoever, well, yeah, definitely. whoever that is that is not injured yet, <laughs> I, I do hope your injury gets better. Any final thoughts before we sign off for the day here? Nope. Yeah. Just more, just more size, I yep. guess. Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I get it. I'm, I'm Shit right there sucks, with you. Yo. Yeah. Shit sucks, yo. And uh, yeah, go check out that GoFundMe because, like we said, there's not a whole lot that we can do right now, but that's something. You know, maybe mm-hmm. that'll. Maybe that'll that'll help in the meantime, and uh, you know, hopefully that hopefully that's noticed um, that you know we give a shit. You know, uh, international fans, like we said on the previous episode, the JSA doesn't get any money from us because they refuse to give us an affordable subscription service or anything like that. <laughs> so it's not like our boycott would mean anything. Right. We just we just gotta yeah. get our voice heard, however we can. Yeah, but but like you say, this is the age of social media. And mm-hmm. as we saw with uh, soccer in the European Super League, that happened a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like the fan, vo- the fan voice matters. Like it really does. I, yeah, definitely. Like we're we're not in the revenue stream of the uh, the sumo associ- sumo association, but like you know, like talking about it, uh, talking about it online, I think that does help. So that's good. I just highly recommend we keep it uh, constructive. Yes, when we do stuff, agree. Rather yeah. than just be overly negative. That's my personal opinion, though. Mm-hmm. A little bit negative, a little bit, but you know, sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's going to be inevitable, but I I'm totally with you. I get what you mean. Um, yeah. Why don't we call it a day there? Um, we do have our preview for the May tournament coming out in the next day or two here. So keep an eye out for that. Yeah. Uh, and then and uh, that will be largely free of any talk of the hebe right. you right uh we got if you want to hear about it listen to this podcast uh we don't, we don't <laughs> now yeah. that we're at the end and you already have yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> well I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna say it again for you did a good job episode. listeners 
You did yeah. a good job, listeners. Good job making it to the end That's and a good listening point. through our floundering mm-hmm. at the end of the episode that always happens. <laughs> yeah. Well, go on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll, we'll bring it up there. Yeah, like like Ryan said, this, this one will be coming out sooner. But uh, yeah, we're, we're doing this so that that preview episode is not just talking about Hibikiryu. It's we, we do want to, we do know that, you know, you watch sumo because you like sumo and we're going to talk about that on the preview. We're going to preview the sumo. That's, that's what we're here for, obviously. But uh, yeah, it's, we weren't going to, we weren't going to not talk about Hibikiryu. We wanted to do our best to talk about what, what we think should happen, what we think has happened, what we should do going forward. And like Ryan said, as much as we possibly can make sure that it's about, it's about the guy, you know, he's, he's the one who's suffered for this. So anything we have to share about him, I would encourage anybody to get that out there. I think, I, I do think I saw somebody on Reddit posted a picture that Hibikiryu was just the guy they happened to be able to meet when they were, uh, when they were going oh, wow. to see Sumo. So that was, oh. yeah, yeah. But uh, there, there is a, uh, or maybe that was Twitter. I'm not sure. If you ever got to meet Hibikiryu, if you have anything that you know about him, make sure that gets out there. Uh, let's remember the guy as much as we can for who he was. Uh, and hopefully we can look back on this incident in the future as something that helped to encourage some change. So mm. with that, Ryan, why don't you take it away? Let's uh, do our sign off deal. Yeah. So uh, if you enjoy this podcast, not the topic of the podcast, but the podcast itself, you can leave us a five-star review. Uh, on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast listening service. You can find us on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, search for Grand Sumo Breakdown. GrandSumoBreakdown.wordpress.com is our blog. Check out Max Breakdown of a recent American tournament. If you have any questions, comments, or corrections, drop us a line at GrandSumoBreakdown at gmail.com or give us a call at 805-613-7866. That's 805-613-SUMO. All right. Before we sign off, uh, Flarek, will you be prepared to sing for the preview episode we that is happening find, in like 24 yes. hours <laughs> we will find we'll find out uh come 24 hours oh, i got buddy. i got plenty of time plenty of time to start that <laughs> all right oh dear well, all right well that'll do it we'll uh, we'll talk to you soon we'll check out our preview coming out any day now yep mm. thank you for listening to grand sumo breakdown until next time Throw your salt high and keep moving forward.